What's going on there guys? Good evening, the Earthmaster here on the live stream with an update video on this Thursday evening, January 20th, 2022, about 6.06 p.m. California time. Latest quake, a uh, looks like a 2.8 earthquake out here on the Earthquake 3D globe around the Puerto Rico area. You can see that little green flag there, the latest earthquake on the map. That's not really the main topic tonight. Tonight we're going to be talking about quite a bit of uptick in earthquake activity around the Tonga Volcanic Island chain here. You can see a pretty good swarm of movement here in the upper four range. Uh, not only there next to the um, the Hunga Tonga Volcano, which sits right about here. You can kind of see it on this map. Let's go, uh, let's go ahead and go to a different little scale here if we can. Yeah, I'm going to bring in the uh, Google Earth map here in just a minute. But uh, I do want to show you guys a little location. This island right here or former island is the Hunga Tonga volcano, which is an earthquake uh, pretty recent within the last couple hours of 4.7 within about a mile or so of the Hunga Tonga volcano and also other volcanoes within this volcanic chain here. Uh, some of these have been active in the past, including one right smack dab here on the ocean floor, a submarine volcano. I uh, got this one right here. It's a... Uh, a little bit hard to pronounce here. It's uh, Fanafuo, I think, or Fanafuo. Not the best uh, pronunciation, obviously, but there is some earthquake activity occurring around that underwater volcano as well. Uh, let's go ahead and kick up the Google Earth view real quick. As I, uh, there we go. Here's a little bit better view of the area. Uh, of course, the uh, Fanafuo, that's the uh, name of that underwater volcano. I guess it's risen above the water before uh, and had a couple eruptions and whatnot. And of course, now it's below sea level uh, by a, a certain distance, uh, but it's still active. And obviously, with the earthquake activity occurring with these volcanic, uh, this volcanic chain out here, um, Hungatoa uh, or Hungatonga sits right here. Of course, this is the old image here on the Google Earth. That is no longer uh, no longer looks like that after the eruption it had there uh, a few nights ago. Seen some earthquake activity there, and also like I mentioned, this volcano here. If you look on Google Earth, there is a chain of volcanoes within this region here. All of these uh, volcanic, a lot of these underwater. This one, uh, Tufua, is that right? That one's a pretty well defined one. Uh, but this one right here is the one we're kind of watching here. It's uh, underwater, and it's definitely got that dome feature, very defined volcanic feature. And I think that one there could be a little bit more deadly if it uh, uh, were to blow. So let's look at the earthquake map once again on the uh, USGS here. And you can see that uh, activity really ramping up along the volcanic chain there, and uh, volcanic chain in the Tonga area. Uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out uh, that there's definitely some movement here in this volcanic area. Uh, so we're, we're watching this area pretty closely as it swarms kicking up within this region. We did see some further deep movement up north around the Fiji Islands area, um, over 600 kilometer depth for that earthquake, and uh, some further movement down south as well. But watch very closely within this region here, folks. A little bit of uh, info on that Fanafua uh, volcano. Uh, formerly known as Falcon Island. Uh, it's a submarine volcano in the western part of Tonga, like I just showed you there on the Google Earth view. Uh, it has created an island several times throughout history. Uh, looks like uh, some several, uh, looks like a few eruptions in uh, recent history, 1894, 1921, and so on here listed on this map or on this chart, uh, consolidating the island and expanding its surface. Uh, in height, in 1949, another eruption caused the explosion and the collapse of the island, which disappeared underwater. New eruptions were recorded back in 1970 and 1993. Uh, the volcano currently sits uh, 56 feet under the surface of the ocean out there. So, uh, yeah, kind of kind of scary. But uh, looking at uh, activity ramping up here within this chain of volcanoes there next to the uh, Tonga area. So no, I, I don't know of anything currently happening, but the earthquake activity is something to monitor pretty closely with this type of swarm. And it's not just in one area, it's the entire length here 
of uh, almost this volcanic chain around the Tonga area. That would not that would be kind of like the worst case scenario if we start seeing those things really pop off uh, one right after another. I don't know what the possibility is, but uh, it's something to keep an eye on pretty darn closely. Tonga Trench here, pretty deep subduction zone, right? You get the uh, surface here uh, at the subduction zone, down dip, melting, right? The uh, the Pacific Plate. And then, of course, you get this volcanic chain over here. Very similar to, for example, the West Coast. You got the Cascadia subduction zone, uh, North American Plate here, down dip. You get the volcanoes there in the Cascades and the Sierra Nevadas there. And uh, some older ones down south, of course, and then uh, Long Valley Super Volcano. But it's another story. Uh, looking at the rest of the earthquake activity around here, uh, somebody mentioned about the earthquake activity up in the uh, Queen Charlotte area, I believe. I'm not really seeing anything kick up here. Looks like some small uh, earthquake activity in the Canada area, but uh, nothing as far as like the most recent earthquake. Uh, looks like this one way over here in the purple um, let's see if I can get it to pop up at 1.7 in the, uh, in the, uh, Quebec area. A little bit of earthquake activity up here in the red circles, uh, around the Australia, or Australia, Alaska region, uh, but nothing significant. So I'm not for sure the, uh, earthquake activity that's being referred to, uh, some quakes out here, but that's over the last, uh, few days or so. So I'll be watching for that. Uh, earthquake there. I'm, I've just not seen that on the Earthquakes Canada map nor the USGS uh, where we're still seeing a swarm of movement here along the Aleutian Islands or Aleutian uh, Trench here. This here another player in producing um, volcanoes, right? Got a subduction zone, down dip, starts to melt, come up to the surface there and you create these volcanoes along the Aleutian Islands. And uh, a lot of activity ramping up here in a trail of movement as well. Uh, we did see a little bit of movement over here along the Japan Trench. This is kind of a newer earthquake, 5.2 at uh, 38.3 kilometers within our watch area for a mega quake. Uh, looking over here along the Philippine Plate, things pretty quiet for the moment around the Manila and the Philippines area southward. Papua New Guinea, a little bit of activity kicking up. But uh, I think the major player right now, definitely this region here of Tonga, be watching that uh, pretty closely. Uh, West Coast, lighten up as well. We've seen some movement out in Nevada. Let's go ahead and bring up the all magnitudes map here. And uh, Northern California looks pretty quiet northward. Of course, I still think they're uh, uh, hesitant on putting out uh, microquake activity within this region. I'm not for sure why. Uh, I'm talking about the uh, Eureka area, southern end of the Cascadia. Some movement out around Mount St. Helens today. Uh, just some microquakes and also uh, some ice quakes, maybe possibly, uh, who knows, somebody mentioned avalanches uh, that could trigger uh, that type of activity on the seismograph station that we were looking at earlier in an update. Mount Rainier showing a little bit of activity as well with a uh, small little microquake at the summit and some movement out there around Victoria uh, and the uh, um, Strait of Juan de Fuca. Some, some small earthquakes within this region. Uh, of Victoria, but nothing significant. Only a 1.5, 1.6 explosion uh, over here in the Washington area, but just some very small microquakes around Victoria, south of Vancouver. I want to check out the trimmer map while we're at it. Cascadia trimmer is back to zero trimmers along the entire length of the Cascadia. Nothing showing up at all um, in the trimmer department. Uh, movement throughout the Intermountain West regions kind of calming down a little bit, uh, although Nevada did show some seismic increase uh, earlier today with a 3.7 near Tonopah. Uh, movement along the Ridgecrest area and the Garlock Fault structure all showing a little bit of heightened movement today. It uh, looks like a little bit of swarming down here just near the Garlock Fault zone, a little bit south of the uh, Ridgecrest area. Also some activity around Mojave and Tehachapi regions. The shear fault zone here, very capable of producing a pretty good sized earthquake as well. Of course, that leads right into the uh, San Andreas Fault here, where the sleeping giant, the southern section of the San Andreas Fault, sleeps. And uh, no doubt we'll be releasing a big earthquake soon. Uh, San Jacinto Fault area looking pretty active as well, with uh, some continued swarming here uh, just south of the uh, Hemet area. And also activity just south of Borrego Springs. Uh, see a little bit of movement here in the microquake department 
Uh, no swarming really to report anywhere south. Salton Sea looks pretty clear. Uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, still seeing a little odd earthquake activity here in the Rock Valley Fault Zone. Nothing significant has come of it, uh, but still kind of keep an eye on that region. Uh, looking at the Yellowstone view here of the uh, thumbnails, the seismograph stations show some earthquake activity within the last couple hours or so. Mainly confined to the, uh, looks like around the Lake Yellowstone area. You can see some very localized earthquake activity there. Um, pretty well defined actually, but uh, microquake at that, probably below the 2.0 magnitude level. Uh, showing up there around the Lake Yellowstone area in Wyoming. Uh, looking at Hawaii, not, nothing above 2.5. So let's go down to the uh, the microquake department. Uh, you can see some movement there within the last hour. Kilauea has returned to the eruption stage. Uh, looks like about 36 hours ago that kind of continued. Still seeing some earthquake activity there around the crater. It is confined to the crater uh, only. And also southeast flank showing some movement here, no, mostly uh, along the uh, northern northeastern side. Uh, looks like about three earthquakes or so within the last hour. Looking up here, Mauna Loa is showing some signs as well. Uh, a little bit of microquake activity at a uh, pretty shallow depth there, about four kilometers. One of those uh, just under one kilometer. Uh, so some movement definitely kicking up here on the Pacific side of the plate. Uh, let's see what have we got. South America, not a whole lot of movement there. Some earthquakes around the Peru Chile Trench. We did see some activity off the coast of Mexico earlier, 5.0. I believe that was a 5.3 downgraded to a 5.0. And off the coast here into the Middle America Trench, a 4.9 at 37 kilometers into that uh, subduction zone. Uh, Puerto Rico, somewhat calm. Not a whole lot of activity on the uh, eastern part of the coast. Atlantic Ocean, all fairly quiet except way down south along the South Sandwich Trench where we're seeing some further movement, 5.6 and a 4.9 earthquake striking uh, within that region. So uh, yeah, just um, you know, be on guard folks, a lot going on out there right now. And it's hard to say exactly what this activity is leading to. All I know, looks like there was just another earthquake added on here. I don't believe there was five of them. I could have swore there was four. Uh, let's see, 23, 33. Okay, so that was a couple hours ago. Uh, but still, that's quite a bit of earthquake activity in the upper four range all along the volcanic chain there, at each, almost at each individual earth, um, underwater volcano. Once again, there is the uh, Hunga Tonga volcano, the one that has blown recently. We did see that earthquake just north there. And the other ones, of course, that I mentioned uh, all shown some signs of activity as well. The standard depth here for this earthquake activity at 10 kilometers. Uh, this could be uh, a lot more shallower, but they just show it there at 10 kilometers. Um, so yeah, d definitely a major player in producing some, uh, some uh, crazy earthquakes, not only in the Tonga Trench region, but uh, volcanic activity. You know, we have seen a lot of deep movement up here in recent times. And of course that uh, subduction of that plate plays a major part, right? in how the uh, volcanic activity reacts and activates. And I think we're in a uh, kind of a heightened time of earthquake activity and volcanic activity right now. You can see the uh, 5.8 equivalent there of the uh, of the Hunga Tonga volcano a few nights ago, and all the earthquake activity around it, north and south of it, within the last week, uh, last uh, actually last 30 days, last week of activity. Well, that's it. Most of it has been within the last week. So uh, something definitely brewing and popping up down here. Something to watch pretty closely around the Tonga area uh, for some possible further eruptions at, uh, who knows, it could be any of the other volcanoes within that region. There is a list of volcanic uh, underwater submarine volcanoes here within this region. So uh, be on guard, folks, for sure. Stay tuned for more updates. And, of course, we're always trying to jump on it right off the bat. As soon as we get some info, we'll definitely do an update on the activity. Uh, that's striking out there in the Tonga area. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here um, and enjoy the rest of the evening here with Missy Mimi's and the kitties. And we will chat at you guys a little bit uh, later on. I just have a strange feeling about uh, the Tonga area. Let's go ahead and check out the solar weather department real quick while we're on it. Something I always like to cover. Um, go over here to the solarham.com or .net website, pretty cool site to check out on the latest solar weather and uh, solar flare threat. 
Looks like they've amplified up, amplified, <laughs> amplified up the three-day geomagnetic forecast here of um, of uh, storming here. Looks like uh, 22nd, 23rd, some higher latitude possibilities of, uh, like I mentioned, some storming coming in. Uh, looks like at least two coronal mass ejections are seen leaving the sun today and both appear to be directed away from the Earth. The one captured below was a result of the M5.5 solar flare, but, uh, well, no major impacts expected. Looking at uh, potential coronal holes facing Earth here, the Earth side up here on the uh, center part of the sun, some further sunspots behind it. Solar flare threat remains very minimal at the moment, 55% chance of a C flare with uh, only a 10% chance of an M flare kicking up um, here in the coming days. So, all right, guys, have a good night. Peace out. Stay safe out there. We will chat you guys soon.